Figure just released a demo of their humanoid robot that can see, hear, think, move, and talk. It's integrated with OpenAI and is genuinely mind-blowing. So I wanted to show their full demo video first, then I'll provide some context, dive a lot deeper into what's happening, and what this means for the future. Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great, can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great. So based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great, can you put them there? Of course. All right, so how do you think you did? I, I think I did pretty well. The apple found its new owner, the trash is gone, and the tableware is right where it belongs. I agree. Thanks, figure one. You're welcome. If there's anything else you need help with, just let me know. My initial reaction was, first off, the music choice paired with the long pauses makes it feel super dystopian. Can you put them there? Of course. It's kind of hard for it not to. And before even comprehending how crazy the robotic side was, which I'll go into some of the technical side in a minute, I was blown away by the speech capabilities, you know, with filler words and even some stuttering. It sounded a lot more human than what you typically hear out of something like Eleven Labs. On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. I saw a lot of people say it must have been pre-recorded and text-to-speech doesn't talk like this. Figure confirmed it's fully synthesized speech output by a neural network, but also you can get close to this with some of the existing models. So it's not that surprising, especially after how OpenAI released the Sora demos just out of nowhere and everyone realized they were way ahead of every other AI video company without ever having really talked about it. My suspicion has been that behind the scenes they have far more advanced models in every other area of AI as well and just haven't released any of it publicly. So it's amazing, but not surprising. Also, I'm sure you'll be able to change it, but I don't really need or want a robot I have around the house to sound like that. You know, really human and almost unsure of itself. I, I think I did pretty well. I think that'll just make me feel bad asking it to do things for me. For some quick context around Figure, they're backed by a bunch of tech leaders. The company was founded less than two years ago, as opposed to something like Boston Dynamics, who's been around for 30 years. One of the founders said they've also vertically integrated basically everything with hardcore engineers designing all of it. So they have moved incredibly quickly. 
They just announced their collaboration with OpenAI two weeks ago and have already released this. I'm sure they were working with them before it was officially announced since they raised $675 million at a valuation of $2.6 billion. But either way, they move really fast, so I'm sure this will be at an even more unbelievable level by the end of the year. We could start seeing these in the workforce or in homes soon. That brings a whole new form of automation, which traditionally has needed specific programming for each task. But with the ability to understand natural language and learn from their experiences, that will open up a whole new range of possibilities in all sectors. Since we're talking about opening up possibilities or disruptions in the workforce, this is a good time to mention a free resource down in the description to help implement ChatGPT into your own work. This is provided for free by HubSpot, who is the sponsor of this video. There's a bundle of five PDFs that go in depth into how to integrate ChatGPT to accomplish more in your workday, regardless of what career you have. So there's specific examples about sales and marketing, decision-making and problem solving, time management and organization, and a lot more. It walks through everything step by step. One of my favorite sections in here is called 100 Ways to Try ChatGPT Today. It has 100 sample prompts that you can use and modify to help with all different types of work to optimize your day. There's a ton of really useful prompts, and there's a total of five PDFs as part of this resource, which is, again, completely free. Just use the link in the description to download that. And thanks so much to HubSpot for partnering with this channel and providing these resources. Now let's look into some of the more technical side of what's going on here. The AI lead, Corey Lynch, posted a lot more details about this. So he starts with a good summary here. Thanks to our partnership with OpenAI, our robot can describe its visual experiences, plan future actions, reflect on its memory, and explain its reasoning verbally. Right, then he goes into the technicals. I'll go over this, but I'll try to simplify everything. First and most importantly is this is all in normal speed and not teleoperated. A lot of robotics demos are sped up to help get across what it's capable of. Also, a lot of them are teleoperated where a human is performing the action and it's mapped onto the robot, like this one from Mobile Aloha from a couple months ago. But this demo was all being done by the robot fully autonomously and in real time. This uses a large multimodal model trained by OpenAI that understands images and text, which are fed in by the robot's onboard cameras and microphones. It has memory and uses the entire history of the conversation, including past images, to come up with its responses and behaviors. They don't say this explicitly, but this is very likely a custom OpenAI model specifically fine-tuned for robotics, which is why it's acting differently than if you were to ask GPT for something, or how we've seen Boston Dynamics implement ChatGPT's API. Welcome to Boston Dynamics. I am Spot, and I will be your guide for today. Figure working directly with OpenAI to fine tune a model specifically for their use cases is much more powerful and will likely keep them ahead of the pack for a while. And neural network policies are like the robot's muscle memory learned during its training. It observes tasks and simulations, then makes mistakes and adjusts and improves. And over time, the neural network develops policies or strategies for taking the right action in different situations. It's incredible how smoothly it's able to achieve each of these actions on the first try. All of its movements look a lot more human than we're used to seeing from these. Like when it throws the trash in this basket, it holds it with one hand, then also decided to slide it closer to the person after. That almost feels like a courteous gesture to me. And the whole body controller is the system that manages every limb and joint in the robot and ensures they all work together harmoniously, while making sure it stays balanced and operates safely. I mean, robots are strong and heavy, so a mistake can be pretty serious. Then the 200 hertz actions and the one kilohertz joint torques means its actions are updated 200 times per second and the forces at its joints are updated 1000 times per second. So this allows it to make very smooth and precise movements and react quickly to changes. Then he goes on to explain how because of the OpenAI integration, it can now describe its surroundings, use common sense reasoning, translate ambiguous requests, and describe why it executed its actions. This first example seems simple, but all he said was, can I have something to eat? He didn't give explicit instructions, so the robot had to look through the environment for food, see the apple, decide the most appropriate action based on the context it had and its policies, uh, in this case, hand the person the apple, then execute the task. It's a Big step up from what we've seen in the past. And then he explains his reasoning while cleaning the trash. On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Um, and I thought this was a pretty funny comment. I've known a lot of people that would struggle with that. He also talks about the ability to reflect on its memory. It had to know what he was referring to when he said, can you put them there? It has to remember what the conversation was to understand what them and there is referring to. 
Okay, quickly figures that out and carries out a plan. Then finally, he talks about learned low-level bimanual manipulation or two-handed coordination. He breaks it down into high-level planning, learned visuomotor policies, and the whole body controller. The model is pre-trained on a wide array of images and text from the internet to understand the world around it, which lets it create a high-level plan or goal. The learned visuomotor policies are what I mentioned earlier. It processes its surrounding at 10 images per second and updates its movements 200 times per second. The 24 degrees of freedom actions are how many different positions and angles its fingers and wrists can utilize. Then while the visuomotor policies handle the fast, reactive movements, the whole body controller ensures the robot robot moves safely and doesn't lose balance, following the set points or targets set by the visual motor policies. So it creates a plan based on its understanding of the world, executes it with precise and adaptable movements guided by its training and visual input, and ensures all actions are performed without losing balance or causing harm. Hopefully that was a decent breakdown. I also wanna cover some of the limitations or just general caveats from what we can see here. First, there's some long pauses. Can you put them there? Of course. I mean, obviously, it's doing something incredibly complex and better than any other demos we've seen. Oh. But it's still slow for a conversation. And this is a relatively simple environment. You know, it's not walking around into new places. We don't know if they trained it specifically on this environment. It's more impressive if we see it walk into a brand new environment for the first time and perform tasks like this. Also, we just haven't seen it walk around very quickly yet. They released some demos previously showing its walking speed and there's other robots that are much faster, like Tesla Bot and, of course, Boston Dynamics. Also, for a demo like this, they try to showcase something it's going to be very good at, rather than all the things it's bad at. Like, I'm sure they could make a long compilation video of them asking it to do things and it failing at them. It is still massively impressive. Everyone has been blown away by this. I'm really excited to see how they progress from here. This is the first time I've done a full video on anything in robotics on this channel, so I'm curious how this will do. I've wanted to make a bigger video covering all the advancements from other companies in one big video, and just the current state of AI and robotics. Let me know if you want to see that. And as always, go check out futurepedia.io if you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest AI tools. You can find the best AI tool for any use case, add your favorites to your profile, get personalized recommendations, sign up for the newsletter to get news and tutorials delivered right to your inbox, and some other really cool stuff coming soon that I can't talk about quite yet. But go check it out, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.